Rye was 11 and we took a trip to Pennsylvania, so it was a long road trip. It was actually to my niece's wedding. Um, I, Levi was with us and I was with my sister, Sharon, and my sister Ruth. So it was just, you know, we were in a car and traveling to Pennsylvania and back. And so that was, I mean, Matthew had stayed home and it was just a quick weekend trip up there. Um, and so we were in the car a lot, so she was in my lap a lot. And so, you know, um, the, I guess that's when we first noticed it. It was hidden at first, like it just was two spots on the side of her head um, that were about the size of a quarter, like one on each side. And um, it was just odd. In fact, when I first realized that she was laying in my lap and sleeping, and um, I was just, you know, playing with her hair and rubbing her head. And um, Sharon, I was in the back seat. My sister Sharon um, was in the front seat. And um, when I first noticed it, it just took my breath away because I just knew that something was serious. Um, but Sharon just looked at me and said, it's going to be okay. It's okay. Um, because... I don't know, you already, as a mom, you know that there's issues going on and you wish that you could do something for them. But when something like that happens, like you just know exactly how serious, like you just know there's something big going on. And um, Sharon just looked, I mean, I'll just remember her looking at me in the rear view mirror and saying, it's gonna be okay. Like I just, cause it just took my breath away so much when I first saw that. Cause um, I don't know, you don't lose your hair for just anything called me when when they were on the trip on their on their way home and called me and said you know it's kind of a you know, kind of a panicked voice and you know just telling me that she found two spots on her hair on her head and it was you know it was like wow what a, what's what's going on Matthew and I uh, had talked about taking her to the doctor and um, so I took her, which is what we usually do is, you know, he's up on everything, but I'm usually the one who takes him to the doctor. Um, and so they just told us, you know, she just basically told us what it was and sent us to a dermatologist. She was kind of nonchalant about it, which was shocking to me because to us that hair is an important thing. And she was just like, you know, I have a couple patients with this and they wear wigs. But at that point, it didn't sink in at all of, you know, how far it would go or how much it would actually take of her hair. The doctor prescribed um, a steroid cream of some sort. Um, I can't even tell you what it was exactly, but you were put, supposed to put it on every day. Um, and we did for a while, but it really didn't, wasn't doing anything. And we actually never went back to the dermatologist at all because he had basically said that there was nothing that he could do um, for it. Besides that cream, he could give you that. But other than that, he didn't prescribe or do anything else. Well, that was um, the beginning of March. And um, Mariah's hair, like even in June, we had our, um, our church puts on a family camp. And even then, like it, the spots on both sides of her head were just getting bigger. And um, you know, we just put a headband on or something. It was at that point, it was just a small lace headband or just to kind of cover up the spots because they just seemed to grow. Um, and so that was June. And um, we, you know, we just, we were just believing that God was going to heal her then. And like ever since, even from the beginning when we first found, found it and the doctor had told us um, what it was, he, um, we just believe that God said he would heal and that was what our faith was in and um, but at that point even in June it was just the spots were getting larger um, probably in July and August even um, they were just getting bigger spots and more spots started showing up and for the most part like people around us couldn't even see that it was going on really unless they you know would ask or we would talk about it or something you really couldn't see, you know, she just wore headbands all the time to cover up the spots um, that were just getting larger. Um, I'm thinking like even September, October, it probably started getting a whole lot worse. 
Like from that day, it just, you know, another spot would show up and then another spot would show up and then those spots would get, they would come together and then the whole part of the head, you know, this side of the head was, was totally gone. And so they had to bring the hair and wrap it around the head just to cover up and then put a band on top. You know, one day, you know, they were getting ready for Sunday morning and this is when it hit me, just because they were being there in the bathroom, just in front of the mirror, trying to do this, do that, pull this hair over that. No, that doesn't work. We got to do something different. So now we got to pull it from this side or wrap it. And, and then it just hit me real hard when I seen them just trying and, and it wasn't working. There was nothing that, that they could do. And that's when it really hit home that there's nothing more that we could do. We have to buy a wig. We have to get a hat. There's, that's when it hurt. She actually started wearing a hat the beginning of December. Um, it was actually in, um, it was probably October. She was, we show at a local county fair. We, um, we have goats and they have do 4-H projects. And she was showing at a local county fair. And by that point, it was really hard to cover up um, the bald spots on her head. Um, and I couldn't even braid her hair anymore. Um, and so that was really hard. But at that point, I was still, I was so proud of her because she didn't let that hold her back from showing her goat or, you know, doing her 4-H project or anything. It didn't, um, she just carried on, um, no matter what. Um, at that point, it was the end of November, I believe, um, that we were at church. And, um, that particular time was just a hard time because, um, her hair was getting really, really thin. And in fact, probably that day or another Sunday around that time, I was actually at home on Sunday morning trying to sew a bigger headband um, because it just, any headband we could buy wasn't covering. Um, so probably the one that she had on that day was probably like a four inch headband that I had sewed that morning um, just in trying to um, find her something that she would be comfortable in. And um, she just had enough maybe to put into a little ponytail at that point um, and it was just I don't know at that point it was it was getting pretty devastating to see how much of it was gone and so like that Sunday that we had come to church it was just a difficult Sunday you know I just remember sitting in the pew that day and crying because um, there was nothing I could do you come against something like that that there's nothing as a parent, there's nothing that you can do. You just do your best to support them and what they're going through and just know that you have to, where to put your trust in your faith. So, I mean, that was difficult, but I just remember sitting there crying and Matthew was actually sitting with me that day. And um, I don't know, I was really thankful for him being there because I just couldn't stop crying that day. And um, we had gone to church and is actually just during his uh, brother Tim's sermon that he was talking about, um, talking about hair and it's the glory of the woman. And he was talking about how um, you shouldn't cut your hair, and you know he had spoken about that in his sermon. And he had actually went and sat back down after the sermon, and we were just in worship after the service. And when the Lord just moved on him, and he felt very inspired to pray for her that day. Now today, I preach the Word. I preach from the Apostle Paul that hair is the glory of the woman. And the devil has struck down one of our children. Come on now. With an illness that's robbing her of her hair. Ooh, Jesus. Call him out. And I today am taking God at His Word. If He made that for His glory, then our God is greater than this devil. Bring that child down here. Hallelujah. 
We're going to believe the word of God. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And God shall raise them up. It ain't my word that's being challenged this morning. It's God's word that's being challenged. And I say, Satan, take your hands off of God's property. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this child for the glory of God and let her hair return to give glory to the God of heaven to testify of the saving grace and the power of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, Satan, you have challenged the children of God. And today the Holy Spirit accepts your challenge and said, you got to go now. Take your hands off of her. And I curse the spirit. I curse this demon. Being sin of God, being ordained of God, to cast Satan out. I say, Satan, leave her now, you spirit of torment. Leave her that she might glorify Jesus Christ in this age. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you raise your hands and praise God? Hallelujah. Why don't you give him praise this morning? Amen. He's not a God that we crafted by human hand. No. Amen. He's God. And he's unchangeable. And he's unstoppable. Hallelujah. There's nothing can stop him. There's no power of hell that can stop the glory of God. Amen. Take him at his word right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many can say amen? So be it. Let it be done. It has been spoken. Let it be done. In the name of Jesus. that Saturday night at the youth camp. I was getting ready in the room uh, right before service. She had gone to get a seat and taken her Bible and stuff in and she came running back in and she's like, I forgot my bobby pins. She had heard stories about, um, you know, like Brother Branham's meetings where a man brought a pair of shoes when he was crippled, um, things like that. She had heard those stories. and But as far as telling her to take them, I didn't tell her any of that. And I had actually bought some new, just pretty bobby pins um, at the store a couple weeks before. And she stuck them into our hair stuff um, to going to youth camp and said, I might need these. Just leading up to youth camp, you know, that, you know, even at youth camp, she had very little hair. Um, she had a little spot on the side. Um, and that was it. Uh, the rest of her head was bald. You know, so just going into youth camp and seeing her go through the prayer line, um, you know, with her with her little uh, hairpins, you know, saying, I'm going to wear these. You know, seeing God move and what he's done for her. 
you know, and that she is wearing those bobby pins, those hair pins, and it's just, uh, it's awesome to see how God has brought it, you know, from, from youth camp to family camp to where we are today and the different prayer lines that she was in and, um, you know, just the, each day has been a step, you know, has been an awesome experience. It just seemed like that her hair just, it just started growing. Like it just, like one day it was there and then all of a sudden it's kind of like the, like a man has a bald spot or a bald head and it's real smooth, no hair follicles. And that's the way it looked on, on most of her head. And then all of a sudden it, it seemed like, you know, the head, as far as the skin of her head, it looked like it was putting in hair follicles because it would start getting those little dots everywhere. And it's like, wow, something's about to happen. Because before it was smooth. And that's when it kind of just kind of gave you an idea that it, something was going on. You know, just the, uh, the feeling of just seeing it grow. And uh, it was just amazing just to, to watch it. Because it just, it wasn't like it coming over here. And it was just like a, you know, like a little, flower. if you see the, like those videos of the flower and how they bloom, it's kind of like what it, when you look back on it, that's kind of like what it reminds me of, is that, you know, a fast forward video of a flower when it comes into full bloom. You know, just, I talked to her about, you know, are you ready to take it off and show Brother Ron your hair? She's like, I guess so. You know, so like even before, you know, at the end of the service, I'd walked out and then Mariah was in the Vacation Bible School. And I walked out and I seen her there. And then I seen Brother Ron and Brother Tim walking out of the service. And I was like, now's a good time. So I grabbed Mariah, take her over there. And he's like, let's see your hair, baby doll. And she just pulls her hair off, her hat off. And, you know, you know, like Brother Tim started crying and, you know, different ones. And it was like, I asked Brother Tim, I was like, is that the first time you've seen her hair? He's like, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just an awesome feeling of just, of just showing, showing her hair. You know, to me, it was just, you know, this is what I got. You know, it's like a, a trophy. The Saturday night service, you know, just an awesome, the way Brother Ron just started talking about the different healings and, um, you had the feeling that he was going to start talking about her as far as what he had seen that morning. Uh, uh, seeing her hair, you had the feeling that he was going to call her up. Uh, and so it was just a, you had a little bit of anxiety and um, just seeing her, you know, stand up when he called her name and then call her up to the platform. I had no idea that she would take her off or he, if he would ask her to take it off. But, you know, when she walked up there and, and pulled it off, you know, automatically without no coaxing um, from, from anyone, and then she hasn't put it on since. It was just, it's been amazing to see it, you know, without the hat and the testimony that it shows that there's hair there. Morning. As we walked out of the building, we were reminded on only, only months ago, there's a little girl here that got a condition that she lost all of her hair and it began to come out in gobs. Brother Tim had prayed for her in, the, in a meeting in their, in their local body and felt led to pray for her. Then during, I believe, Easter camp, there was a prayer line that took place all of her hair was gone and the doctor said that it would never come back. It would never regrow. And just in case that it would regrow, it would be white 
or some off color. It wouldn't be natural. This morning as we walked out of the building, she came up to us with her daddy and she stood there and she took her hat off. There's hair growing on her head that they said it would never happen. likes models. Come on up here, baby doll. The world, world likes models. I, we got one. <laughs> Hallelujah! her glory and maybe you have been scarred by sin and you've been scarred by a lot of things in your life but this is a physical manifestation that God restores the glory in our lives one time and they were looking at my head and I was like what's wrong because I didn't know I didn't know Jesus I was just trying to come crazy I was in bed one time and we were sleeping and it was like six o'clock in the morning and well, I turned on the bed of one I woke up, like, just like woke up, and then he said, I can't, I, I do believe that Jesus healed me now. And I was doubting it, and like, my face was going down. So, and I heard that I could just feel all my faith come up. He started talking about me, I just put all my stuff down, because I just knew he was going to call me. I was nervous. <laughs> I just felt weird because everybody would like, I don't like people staring at me, giving me all such, such attention. And they just like, ugh, ah. Ever since I was little, my favorite Bible verse is always Romans 8 28. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. It's always my favorite one. you something who was there that other day in a prayer line when a little girl eight nine ten years old walks up into the prayer line lost all of her hair and she says carrying a beret and she says I come I want my hair back who is that that now the family testifies, she lifts her cap off. And she's got new hair growing all over her head. Hallelujah. Who did that? Who could do that? A man, a fellow 
friend of my son-in-law, Jeff, he says, he was telling him about this. He said, I've got the same problem. I've lost my hair. I've lost all my body hair. I lost my eyelashes. I lost my eyebrows. It's incurable. There is no hope. There is nothing that can do it. And he stopped him. He says, oh, yes, there is. There's a God that can do it. And we prayed for her. And she's going to get her hair back. And you know what he said? I want to serve that kind of God. If there's a God that can do that, I want to serve that kind of God. I'm telling you, that's the kind of God that we serve. He can restore you back. Hallelujah. He can restore you again. No matter how far you have fallen, no matter how hopeless the case, no matter how how the situation is, this God is a restorer. He's a God of all power. He's a God of all grace. He's a God of all mercy. And he's a God present among us today. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, Jesus. 